Welcome to our review on increasing biodiversity. Before we really get into the processes that we can use to do this, we need to understand two key terms. The first one is endangered species. When we talk about an endangered species, we're talking about one where there's only very low numbers of them left, which means that they're at risk of extinction. And I've given you two examples at the bottom there in the pictures. On the left hand side, you can see the hawksbill turtle and in the middle we have the orangutan. The other key term we need to know is the word extinct. When we refer to a species as being extinct, it means that all members of that species are now dead. And again, two examples on the right hand side there. At the top we have an organism called the thylacine and at the bottom we have the dodo. So the way in which we actually go about trying to increase biodiversity is through this process of conservation. And this is where we're going to protect a natural environment to ensure that habitats are not lost. Now, the way we do this is through a process of active management of those habitats. So we're still using resources from them, but it's in a sustainable way. So that means that we're not cutting down more trees than we're replanting, for example. So one way we can go about this is by creating nature reserves. So these can be marine, aquatic or terrestrial. So basically in the sea, in water or on land. So by designating them a nature reserve, then what we've done is we've protected that area. And the pictures you can see there are from one in Mexico. So they've got a marine nature reserve there that's designated as the biosphere. And that means that these animals are protected. So it's one of the places you can actually go and see things like manatees in the bottom right corner there and the dolphins and turtles, etc. So when we're talking about this active management, there are a few examples that you should know about. One is controlled grazing, so only allowing animals to graze land for a certain period of time, which means that any plant species on that land has time to recover. We can restrict human access, so obviously if we're only using paths, then it prevents people trampling all over the endangered plants. Feeding the animals, so if we've got a problem where there's limited food supplies, if we feed the animals in the area, that ensures more of them are going to survive to reproduce. And we can also reintroduce species as well. So where we've got an area where the numbers have dropped, then what we can do is reintroduce the species to that area in order to boost their numbers or potentially to put them back to an area where they've become extinct in that particular region. Another key technique that we can use to increase biodiversity is captive breeding. Now, the whole aim of captive breeding programs is to create this stable and healthy population of a species and then gradually reintroduce them into their natural habitat. However, there are problems with this. Firstly, we've got issues in terms of maintaining genetic diversity because we've only got a limited number of breeding partners, which means the gene pool is quite limited. And this is something we're seeing with cheetahs, for example. Second one is that if we've got organisms that have been born into captivity, then we may not be able to release them. They may not be suitable for actual release because they might not know how to catch their own food. They might not know those skills that they'd have been taught by the parent in the wild. So even though captive breeding is one way that we can increase numbers, it's not always perfect in terms of reintroduction. However, we do have some success stories. Obviously in Kent, we've got Portlim and Howlitz who do an amazing program with the gorillas there and reintroduce them on a regular basis. When we're thinking about plants, we can also help prevent their extinction. And the key way we do this is through the use of something called a seed bank. Now, the whole idea of the seed bank is to conserve the plants. So we'll take seeds from a variety of plants and then we store them so that if in the future the plant was to die out in the wild, we've got this bank of seeds that we can then go to and then grow them once more. So they are examples of a gene bank because they're a store of genetic material. And there's a big seed bank that's up in the Arctic, actually, in the Arctic Circle. And then you go deep underground and they're stored in these sub-zero conditions with plants from all over the world stored in these crates. So hopefully at the end of this, you can explain how we can use conservation to increase biodiversity and more particularly how we can use captive breeding to increase our biodiversity 
while also remembering a couple of the drawbacks.